okay. Sheriff, sheriff, you need to back up out of my face, sir. Oh. You have no authority. That, you not gonna oh. tell me what to do, my. Uh, it's strange to see how often ego comes between the duty of a police officer and even forces them to turn on against their fellows. Today we'll be looking at three such instances where a cop turned against their fellow officers. On the 30th of January 2024, a Lexington police officer spotted a vehicle going way beyond the speed limit. He quickly initiated a traffic stop and pulled the guy over. However, as he reached out to him, he was surprised to find out who he was dealing with. Hello. Are you sure? Okay, sir, so this podium, could you do an 85 and a 55? I was going. Going where? Call out. Where are we going? We're SWAT call out right over oh, here. I didn't know we had one. We oh. have an armed guy barricaded in the house. Just be a police officer. And where at? Right down here on. Here in Lexington? Yeah. We have an armed person we, we don't know about. The individual caught speeding was a Cleveland County Sheriff, Chris Amazon, who was hurrying to a SWAT call. Surprisingly, the Lexington Police Department were unaware of this situation. That's when the officer went over to contact the police chief inquiring about the situation. All right, I'll call my chief and let him know. 301 next. According to the Cleveland County Sheriff, we have a posse situation at that location. Moments later, the Lexington police chief, Ronnie Johnson himself, appeared on the scene as he seemed visibly upset for being kept unaware of the incident. Soon, he was about to let out his anger. Captain Tom? Captain Hawk? Yeah. Where's Gennady? Chief, sir. Hey, Chief. Hey, Chief. What's going on here? We've realized that I'd like to know what's going on in my own we city. We would have notified you, sir. We would have? Yeah. Well, hold on. I've been at the city. I've been down there at the PD hall. Okay. Right. Let's go According to the call, yep. it says Lexington was notified they refused to respond according to our call. Okay, I don't know who the is that. First of all, sir, I know the chief is not I'm just telling you what the call I don't appreciate all of this going on and nobody Thanks notified me about there. it. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, what's your name? As the chief vented out his frustration, Deputy Sismonski attempted to interject, which the officers didn't like and went over to confront him. Sir, I am too. You're not going to talk about chief like that, sir. That's not going to happen. You can get the out of my face. I don't give a who you are. Okay? This is my county, too. Back up, back up. Back up. Back up. No, you don't. This is like, going to be good. According okay. to the call, you need to stop. Lexington PD is not Chill out, back out. up, everything's going to be okay. But you need to back up. I get it that you're no, you can back up. Negative. Right. Deputy Sismonski didn't hold back and had no respect for his compatriots. He then proceeded to do something which escalated the already tense situation. This right that here ain't what We're not going to be respectful. Okay. Sheriff, sheriff, you need to back up out of my face, sir. Oh. You have no authority. That, you're not going to tell me what to do, my. Uh, You're not gonna get in my sheriff's hey, face. Just like back you up. told me. Your hands off me, man. Back up, John. Pull him, pull him back. No, he He's just came off my face. face and said the same shit. Go to jail. Stop. He's gonna go to jail. Stop. Both of you need to back off. This is our operation. This is our county. Understand? Oh, yeah. Perfectly clear. Don't do anything. Perfectly clear. Come on. Let's run that. I want that lieutenant's name. So he put his hands on me. Following the altercation, Chief Johnson and the officer decided to depart the scene, leaving the incident to the sheriff's department. Johnson later came on media to assert that this wasn't the first instance the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office kept him out of the loop. The Cleveland County Sheriff's Office also took notice of the sad incident and released a statement where they expressed remorse over the incident and also attempted to provide a context for the actions of their deputy. We can only hope for an honest investigation, but given that the investigation is being held within the department, our expectations for a positive and just outcome are limited. However, this wasn't the first time there was a dispute between police officers and sheriff deputies, as this one inside a jail was even more intense. Them, them goddamn supervisors can 
I understand. Yeah, so, I get. I so get that. Get that. So I can get the out the way. On July 16th, 2022, several Columbus police officers arrived at the Muskogee County Jail with their detainees, only to find out that they were not welcome inside. A day ago, the jail run by the Sheriff's County Office decided to change the first come first serve policy and instead decided to book deputies prisoners, then state troopers, and then the police officers. The officers, however, without any prior knowledge of this fact, were left stranded outside the building. Hey, Snipes, they're still denying us. God bless America. They won't let us in. They won't let y'all in. They won't let me in. Oh, God, ain't that right? Hmm? Ain't that right? Nah, you go in there before us, I'm gonna raise hell. Watch this. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm gonna file, I'm gonna file a complaint. A legitimate complaint. Am I with you? For me, right, but right, go at right, home. Out of there. Central, SB1, please. Lieutenant Nestor about to get a complaint. 100%. Oh. Right, right, right. That is the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen in my life. Hey. As a sheriff's deputy arrived on the spot, he straight away cut the line and went inside. The officers, who were already pretty tense, were agitated seeing this behavior, prompting another deputy to come out and explain everything. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, don't yell it. Don't start yelling. Hey, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm gonna file a complaint. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Good. How are you? Tell them. Y'all have directors, I have directors. Sheriff says ain't nobody coming in, only five at a time. S O N G S P has priority. So GS or S O has priority even and GSP, though. And then you guys. I mean this is beyond my control. I don't have any so don't okay. yell at me. Alright. All right. So does that last one gets clear and I'm gonna bring in five. Hey, yeah, unless another SO unit shows up. This is not my decision. Every officer from the Columbus Police Department was extremely upset on this behavior, and they also made sure to let their feelings know. Because I'm about to have, I'm about to have a stroke. What do they have your stroke? So, hey, guess what, guess what, you want to anyway. This is a failure of justice. And the jail does not like us, so we have five people sitting here outside waiting. It's wonderful. The sheriff is very pissed with us, okay? And he runs the jail, so. Amidst this, one of the officers parked his car in a manner that blocked the deputy's vehicle who had cut them off earlier. Now, this behavior was said to trigger the sheriff deputy who was extremely flustered. We, man, we, we, them, them goddamn supervisors can I understand, fix I get, I so get that. Get that. So I can get the out the way. way. All right, so, so I got a call to go to. I can't go to the car because y'all want to play stupid ass childish game. At this point, tensions were escalating as one of the officers even went ahead to grab his weapon. Deputy Adkins, on the other hand, was still trying to get the vehicle away so he could get out of the jail premises. Uh, I'm going to go get my stuff because this is getting stupid. I'm not going to be de-armed outside of the jail. You need to get somebody to get Goddamn car, so I can get out. They, they want to play game. Y'all ain't letting them in, so they don't want to let me out. I hope I don't see you getting your ass on the street, because I'm gonna drive the by, and you can tell your goddamn supervisor and everybody else that's in there. Do it. I'll see you in a car, because I got a goddamn car to go to. You don't want to move the goddamn car. As the Columbus police officers refused to move the car aside, the sheriff's deputies had to contact their chief in an attempt to find a resolution. I don't know, but I'm, I'm probably gonna quit. This is This is so stupid, dude. Back it up so we don't have to bring his ass. Listen, man, I'm only doing what my supervisor told me. I understand, I, this is ridiculous, and I, and I hate that I'm dealing with this shit. But you're gonna have to talk to the sergeant over there. No, I'll be talking to the chief. Hey, Chief, I'm sorry. We got a situation over here. We got CPD won't let our guys out. And they're about to get go to blows. I'm asking your CPD officer to back Word. up his car. And this is, he's saying that his supervisor told him not to let it. And again, no one no one on so our side is threatening. A, we're having a tit for tat over here. 
Hold on, hold on. Roll down your window. The situation was starting to get heated up as more and more pressure was being put on the poor officer who had been assigned to block the deputy's car. Meanwhile, additional police calls were coming in, which they kept on ignoring. Uh, we gotta stop playing these. Yeah. This is this is retarded. Yes. I know most of us are kind of at a standstill. Do I have anybody on Forest Road reference to 7511? Hey, sorry, we got. Uh, hey, we're all standing on the wall. Yeah. Is here. Hey, move your car, bro. Fantastic. All right, well, I don't get who, who your sergeant is. He, hey, he's with the chief. Okay. Sorry, sorry, he's with the chief. He's with the chief. Sorry. Said, what, what, what's so your name? I got there, started rolling up. Let, let me right before I got there. Give me a second. Give me a second. I hear you. I hear you. What is it? Sally Morgan. Yes, sir. Go ahead and back it up. Back it up. All right. Just as it seemed the officer might cause the matter to end, the sergeant stormed out, refusing to reconcile with the sheriff's deputies. Hey, Fairbanks, no. You stay right there, man. Hey, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, your sergeant over here tell him not to move. It is long for us. Chief said he's not moving. Uh, we gotta get somebody over here. We gotta put this. This ain't respectful. Hey, damn! I got a lot there. What I gotta do with this shit? Yeah. Hey, okay. so I don't want to fight. Everybody in. Everybody in. The situation was heating up, and a supervisor had to calm his deputies down as he moved them in. Maybe the police officers seemed to have overreacted. Well, this female officer clearly had a different perspective on the matter. I try to get through, and they immediately, halfway open it, shut it on me. And I hear through the, there's a deputy sending me on the radio, that female officer is trying to get, get into the door. Do not let her in that door. Do not let any officer through that door. From PD? From, from the jailer. The jailer is just saying that through their radio. So they won't even let us through the door. There's one person inside there, and now they let the sheriff, they book the sheriff guys out, and in, he's like screaming at us to move our vehicles. They won't even let any of our guys in. They won't book any of our guys. They won't even let us in to use the bathroom, nothing. Nothing. This is the I think this is where. This is it. This, like, is, this, this, is, is, it. this is as bad as it can get. Like, we can't principle someone's crime, man. It appeared that the jail, which came under the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office, might have gone against the police officers, as they were visibly upset by the treatment. This guy's got a call, but then my sergeant's telling me not to move. Right. I have this And then when I started back, and uh, he told me to stop and get him. Earth okay. okay. What about arresting all of them for not doing their job? All right. Okay. This is crazy. Embarrassing. Yeah. I'm gonna leave the keys in there, dude. I, I really not wanting to to be a part of a to get charged with a crime, dude, for a stand, dude. I'm telling you right now, bro. I'm with I'm transferring. Uh, possession schedule two, obstruction, and drug related objects. Right, so far, it's all felt. All right. Get in your car and pull your feet outside. The the officers stood and waited outside the jail for hours, but nothing seemed to work in their favor. Dejected by this behavior, they decided to take their prisoners to 6th Avenue. Let me a damn court date and let me go to court. All CPD prisoners at the jail, you see me out there on the, in between the street, between the building of the SO and the CPD, we'll have our meeting there. Yeah, we have a seat, watch your head, okay? This is sad, man, they doing this shit. Watch your legs, okay? And also said he was going to ram the car, so... Oh, yeah, he said he was going to ram the car. So, I mean... He's going to pass right by us if he ever sees us getting our ass beat on the street. This is... Rock bottom. Eventually, the police officers had to release their prisoners with a court summit, requiring the inmates to return to court later this month. It was indeed a sad incident to view. And what's even more troubling is the fact that during this encounter, a robbery was taking place, and none of the officers even attempted to reach there. Later, however, the sheriff and the Columbus police chief met and set aside their differences. The sheriff also released a statement claiming that their relations are still intact, and both of them have continued to work together to this day. Well, that was a tough 
tough night, but what happens when a police officer is caught breaking the law by his superiors? I can't go right You're going now. Okay, well, what if I don't? We gonna have a problem. It all began on January 13th, 2021, when a distressed caller informed the Bossier City Police Department about a police unit being driven erratically. She also claimed that the driver almost hit the mailbox and swerved into the opposite lanes as well. Moments later, two supervisors from the police department contacted the driver and went over to talk to him in a grocery store parking lot. How was your driver? Driving fine. They both moved to the right. Other than that, it comes out, drop something, whatever it is. So you got off by having you got off at six o'clock today? I did. I got two kids now. Did you uh did you shake the bed or the driver was found to be the off-duty police officer, Travis Coker. As one of the supervisors went over to search Coker's car, he discovered something suspicious. Coker claimed to be completely okay and had not taken any meds that day. That's when the supervisor came back and proposed a simple test to it. But Coker appeared hesitant, signifying that he might be guilty. Something it was dropping my phone. Okay. It ain't the slip. Listen to me. You're gonna have to go this route. What I just told you. Okay. I, I'm telling you, I can't do that right now. You don't have no choice. I'm telling you that right now. Officer Coker wanted to dodge the drug test, and despite the supervisor's multiple requests, he remained intact. Coker insisted that he wasn't ready for the test at that moment. However, he assured them that he'd return to the department after he paid a visit back home. But the officers weren't too pleased with his behavior. Uh, if you was in your POV, and listen, 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 I would be. Listen, listen to me. Shot. If you was in your POV, we wouldn't be out here right now. I know that. But you in the city vehicle. Right. And, and it's her word again. She don't, did she got some video tape? Uh, listen to me. This, this is you not court. I mean? This is an administrative deal. I know that, but I'm just saying Anybody's out here, the police, like I said, if I drop my phone and run over the line, I'm not, not now, man. Yes, sir. But I have, I have to get to, I get, give me 35 minutes. I'll come back and do whatever can't do, that. do. Can't do that. Can't do that. Okay, well, can I get somebody to come get me? No, no. You got to You got to come with us. If, you, How, if, if this, I this, cannot this, come this, with you. If you refuse, you're not going to have no choice but to put you on the ministry. And what does that mean? That means that we have to take your gun. The supervisors even threatened to have him placed on leave if he failed to comply with them. Despite this threat, Coker remained adamant about returning home. Are you going to take the test or are you not going to take the test? I can't, 
I will take the test today. I just can't take it right this second. So here's the deal to make it perfectly clear. What he's explaining to you yes, sir. is that team. he and the captain are giving you an order. No, being in patrol administration, okay? You're under their yes, command that I you have that. to submit I, I to, to reasonable suspicion testing. There, there is, for, what, for the what is the reasonable suspicion? Listen, this is not but, for debate. Hey, Listen to I'm me. just saying, explain to me Coker, the reasonable suspicion. you're arguing. Look. I'm, not, I'm, I'm asking. Okay. Sergeant, they, they, don't, don't worry about it. He's, he's been policing a long time. It's not a detective. You don't understand what we're saying right now. You're not going to double understand what we're saying. Okay, so we just need to one of the supervisors reached a breaking point as he was surprised to see the level of ignorance being shown by an officer. I'm on the phone with one of the different chiefs. You said you gotta go for reasonable suspicion. You gotta go. I can't go right this second. Can you give me 30 minutes? And no, I'll, we're gonna make we're gonna make sure whatever 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 your family needs are, we will make sure those family needs are taken care of. I have to there is I have to take care of. I have a, my mother died two weeks ago. I have a daddy that I, I didn't ask for this. Captain, I'm not trying to make your job hard. None of y'all's job hard. Y'all know me. You're doing a good job making it hard. I mean, I'm not making mine hard because I got, nothing said I had to go home and go to sleep. Yeah, am I going to go to sleep? Yeah. But I had to think, that's the night thing I told you. I'm doing the, I'm juggling with the best I can. The best, the very best I can. I, I, I go to work every day. Are you going to submit to the testing or not? I will go to any test y'all want me to go to. Just give me just a little bit of time. Yeah, do that. At this point, it was adamantly clear that Mr. Coker was just being dishonest as he was creating stuff, something which he continued to do so in the next few minutes. Yeah, here we are. And, and, and you said you got family that you I do. I got family. I'm on I my you. off day. Yeah, I understand that. But you in our car. Right. I am in your car, and right. which I was not driving when y'all pulled up. But it's, but it's somebody that don't like the police count. I ain't, Man. is there something wrong with the car? It, it doesn't matter. But, it's, it's, it does it's, matter. It doesn't. This is not it, a DWI. It's the, it's right, I know it's not. I ain't drinking drop. You know you're not getting back in the car to drive. Fine, I'm going to get my stuff out of it. When? Right now. It's my stuff. I can believe I can get it. It's my personal stuff. I'm not saying over, it's gonna happen. But over what, Captain? Because right now, the way you acting, we're trying to do Captain, our job. Not, we're I'm trying to be something. So we're trying. You are, are being respectful. I'm being as respectful okay. as I can be. Are you going? Yes or no? Captain, I have an obligation at home. Or, or, I'm off. I'm not going right now. It's a yes or no answer. I'm not going right now. Okay. And I get my that. personal stuff out of my car. And I guarantee you we can look around and everybody's broke policy. Okay. They got body cameras on? No. That's, that's against policy. Seeing the situation deteriorate and the supervisors not granting him any leverage, Mr. Coker started to get confrontational and even rude at times. Listen, you don't want to stand, Coker. I got the keys to the car. I need that money. Yeah, you get, yeah, we, we, we don't get my money. We're going to get you the money. money. Nobody trying to keep your money from you. Nobody going to keep your money. Well, why can't I get it now? Stop. Stuff, stuff's in front of the car. You can get it from hey, me. Stand, stand in front of the car. 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 Well, I need to stand in front of the damn vehicle because I said so. That's what. Well, who are you to say so? I, we ain't no right to be today. At this point, I don't trust you, man. I don't care if you trust me or not. I don't want you near me. That's fine. I don't want you near me. How about that? Okay. I'm not under arrest. Okay. Okay. Can All you right. grab my bucket of dips? Sitting right there, I'll be sitting there's no possible explanation as to why would Coker be so against the test, apart from the fact that he knew he was under the influence of a substance. Y'all treat me like shit. I ain't mad at none of y'all. Nobody treat you like anything, Coker. We, we, we had a complaint. We got to see through it. But you're hindering us and doing what we got to do. Y'all really think that I'm a dope? Come on, man. I've got none of my prescriptions out of the car that I have to take today, Will. I've told you. They've given you a direct order. You have to comply what? to go submit to chemical testing. Why? Uh, under what grounds? They don't have to have grounds. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They, yes, they do. No, they don't. Did I get pulled for a rent? It doesn't matter. Sorry, then sorry, take it up with your attorney we'll and general. civil service. We'll I suggest we'll you do. What say. I've already read it. I know what However, the officers did settle with Mr. Coker as he was allowed to call someone to pick him up and eventually leave the area. Despite this, the heated altercation between the officers showed no signs of stopping. You don't have to get escalated because the thing is you're OJ. Okay? You might have some car, but you don't have one. Okay, I understand. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, man, I'm just gonna cut dry. Okay, <laughs> I think I'm good. Okay, go ahead and tell me. Don't get too close. Then back up off me. I'm right here. Okay. I'm actually gonna stand right there. I'm just saying, I don't want this thing to escalate. How's it gonna escalate? You tell me. I'm hoping it don't escalate. Well, what would it escalate to? I don't know. I'm just telling you. I know that it's gonna escalate because I'm standing on the curb. I don't want it to escalate. Yeah, me, I know you don't. Officer Coker put his entire career in jeopardy, but refused to go with the officers and give a simple test. It's strange how a law enforcement officer would disregard his job like this. Best fucking police, young guy. Fucking city. I understand. Do, do you realize one thing? If you would just stop in one second, just think. This whole time. While we sitting up here going through all everything that we've gone through, not want to go. It's not not wanting to go. Okay, can, can I, I, can I can go I, to space where you want me to? You know that. I, that I have no hard feelings towards anybody. I don't know what was said that I swerved. If I dropped my phone, I swerved over to the side. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm forgiving that. I, I really am. I, I don't want any. I, I worked with every one of you. Especially you. I don't, I don't want any there, and, and I have no issue with you. Right. I don't, but I have you a job. You doing your job? I yes, know I, I, have, I, have, I have a job to do, and, 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 and everything and all the sequence of events that have taken place today, Lord knows I hate it. Meanwhile, Coker's ride came up, and that's when he decided to make it up with the officers involved. Nevertheless, it was still strange and disheartening to witness a police officer behaving like this towards his superior. It raises the question that if that's how he is with them, how he would even behave with the general public. Coker left the area and he was immediately placed on administrative leave and an internal investigation was launched into the case. After a few weeks, the investigation found Coker guilty and he was fired from his job. Well, that brings us to the end of our video. Today, we got to witness three cases where law enforcement officers were fighting amongst themselves, trying to get one up over the other. It's truly disheartening to see the cops making a joke about themselves, especially in the first two cases. It raises the question of their inflated egos and asks the question of how would they fare against civilians if they weren't being respectful to their compatriots. If you have the same concerns, then please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.